Keto versus vegan. Which one is better? Which one is healthier? Which one helps you lose weight? Which one is the best long term? It seems like there's developed two different camps that there's keto versus vegan or this versus that. But today we're going to talk about and clarify a lot of these different issues so that you can make some good choices and understand where this might fit in for you. Coming right up. A lot of people have had success with vegan diets. A lot of people have had success with keto diets, whatever their goals might be. And then whatever works for them, they tend to become very, very strong proponents and feel that, oh yeah, this worked for me, so therefore it should be the best thing for you. And some people even think of, of keto as anti-vegan or a vegan as anti-keto, but it doesn't have to be like that. They're not mutually exclusive and each one has their point and their value and their time. So over time, people have eaten so terrible that we've gotten this idea that meat is bad and vegetables are good, or even bigger picture, plants are better for you than animal products. So why might we jump to that conclusion? Well, a lot of this happened because they started observing heart disease and atherosclerosis. They saw the fat in the arteries and they said, oh, it has to be the fat. So now fat became the bad guy and, and fat came from meat and animal products and so forth. So we made all these different associations. But is it true? Not necessarily or not at all, actually. So if you take someone who eats really, really poorly, they eat any junk they can get their hands on, donuts and beer and potato chips and hamburgers, that person probably tends to not eat so many vegetables. So then we look at them and we say, oh, they're not eating any vegetables. Then we look at another person who eats more vegetables and that person is healthier. So we conclude, hey, this vegetables is the reason that that person is healthier. But someone who is more concerned with their health and seeks out a lot of vegetables, they probably also pay more attention to the other things that they eat. They're more discerning. So we can't just blame it on one thing or another. It is probably more of the overall attention to food and how well they take care of themselves. So it is not as simple. We cannot draw the conclusion that plants are good and animals are bad. It just doesn't work like that. Then we want to ask, well, what is a vegan or a vegetarian? Well, it is simply someone who eats plant-based food. So a vegan is a vegetarian, but then there's some groups of vegetarians who feel that they can allow themselves some eggs and some dairy products. And that's called a lacto-ovo vegetarian. And while those people often consider themselves vegetarian, a vegan is someone who is strictly plant-based. They wouldn't eat anything from an animal. So a vegan would probably say that a lacto-ovo vegetarian is not a true vegetarian. So they're, they're allowing themselves a little bit different things. And in my opinion, if you're going to do something long term, I would definitely opt for the lacto-ovo vegetarian and we'll kind of cover that as we go. So the biggest thing that we have to understand about vegan or about plants versus animal foods is that they serve different purposes. And it's not exclusive, it's not like a hard line delineation of any sort, but on the whole, plants are more cleansing and detoxifying. And animal foods are more nourishing and rebuilding. So the body always has two states. It has a general direction. It can be more catabolic or breakdown, or it can be more anabolic or build up. 
and it sounds like, oh, breakdown, that's a terrible thing, and build up seems like a good thing. Not necessarily so, because the body goes through breakdown and rebuild all the time. You cannot build a healthy cell without first breaking down some things. So things wear out, things get toxic, things get sort of worn, and then we have to break them down and replace them with new healthy tissue. So both are equally important. So first we break down and then we rebuild. And that's how things work. So it depends on what stage would be more important for you at a given time. We often hear that plants are very nutritious, that if you don't eat plants, you're not getting the nutrition. Well, it's not that simple. Plants and animal products have different kinds of nutrition and we need both. So plants have more minerals and more phytonutrients and these are more cleansing. They're not so much rebuilding. Minerals are catalysts. They catalyze, they initiate, they make possible different reactions, metabolic reactions in the body. So they're, they're super important. We can get them from different sources of food, but plants have the most minerals. Animal products have more fat-soluble vitamins and more bioavailable proteins. They have a higher biological value on a lot of the nutrients. We can utilize them better. So it's not about if you read a table and you see that, oh well, this vegetable contains this much protein and this many minerals and this much fat and an animal products contain this much of different things. There's a difference between what the food contains, the contents, how much nutrients can we ex extract in a laboratory test versus how much of that food can you absorb and utilize. Just because a food contains something doesn't mean it will actually end up in your body. We don't absorb most of the nutrient. A lot of the stuff just goes straight through you. So the question is how much of it can you absorb and utilize? So animal products and vegetable plant products, they both have their value. There is a better time for each one. So what it depends on is what is your weak spot? What is the spot? What's the portion of your physiology, of your body that needs the most support? If you have a weak spot, if you have a system that is falling behind, and not able to keep up anymore and that's causing your symptoms and your problems and your disease and your condition, then that's the right thing to address for you. So just as an example, if your adrenal system, your adrenals, they respond to stress and that's a catabolic system. When you're under stress, your body is concerned with survival in this moment. It's concerned about generating blood sugar to get you through this crisis and it will break tissue down. It will break down protein. It will break down glycogen stores. So it's a catabolic state. And if that's dominant for you, then you're basically falling apart. Your greatest need is to rebuild. And so for that person, then they would not benefit so much from a lot of vegetables. They would benefit more from more animal products that are more rebuilding. Whereas someone who has a liver problem, if the liver is failing, if the liver isn't keeping up with the detox, uh, if it is jam-packed with sugar and fat from an insulin dominance, from insulin resistance, or if the liver is not keeping up with its detoxification, then the liver would be the main thing. And now you would want to help that liver cleanse. You do not want so much protein and so much rebuilding, so much anabolic stuff, because that's not the main problem. The main problem is toxicity and the vegetables will not only help cleanse and detoxify the liver, but they're also easily digestible. So they help the body, the liver get rid of stuff, and they're not such a burden on the liver either. Whereas a healthy liver wouldn't have any problem with that burden, 
that it would be benefiting to be anabolic. So if we apply that to the top three disease conditions that people die from, cancer, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, they all have different weak spots. Cancer is primarily a toxicity problem. And diabetes is primarily a liver problem. Cardiovascular disease is a inflammation problem that has more to do with insulin and sugar than it has to do with toxicity. So out of these, the cancer would definitely benefit from a cleanse. That's the primary problem. That's why things like the Gerson diet and vegan diets and massive amounts of, of vegetables and juicing, even though they're catabolic, that it helps the body cleanse and detoxify. That's the primary thing. That's the most important thing. That's the thing that's going to help the body turn it around for that cancer because the cancer is a toxicity condition. Of course, you don't want to load up the body with too much sugar because the cancer thrives on sugar. It's primarily a carbohydrate metabolism. It loves that sugar. So even if you go vegetarian or vegan, you want to focus on not fluctuating your blood sugar. Don't, don't put in a bunch of sugar. And diabetes is a storage problem. We have tried to store too much. We've eaten too much food that trigger insulin. And now you can eat a combination of plant food and animal food as long as it doesn't trigger a lot of blood sugar. And a lot of animal products are going to have be more satisfying. They're going to have protein and fat, but they're going to make you satiated. You're going to feel full longer. So that's going to give the body an opportunity to cut back on the number of meals and stabilize blood sugar and give the body a longer period of fasting. So you could do some intermittent fasting. And that is probably easier to reverse the diabetes on a more animal-based diet than a plant-based diet because the animal foods are more satisfying so you end up eating fewer meals. And cardiovascular disease would be more like the diabetes because they're both associated with what's called metabolic syndrome or syndrome X, which is driven by insulin resistance. Another misconception that we want to cover is that plants are easier to digest. Well, that's true for some people, but I have seen people in my clinic and some people say, oh, I can't digest red meat. Fish and chicken is better. Uh, and typically what that means is they're not making enough hydrochloric acid to break down the protein. But I've also had people who react to vegetables. Some people say, oh, I can eat all the meat I want, never have a reaction, but I can't eat vegetables or I can only eat cooked vegetables. And some people say, oh, you should eat a raw diet. And they try a raw diet and it works exceptionally well while others can't digest anything raw. So it all depends on what you can digest because if you cannot digest it, it doesn't matter what worked for the last person. It doesn't work matter what worked for your neighbor or your best friend. If you can't digest it, it is not going to do anything beneficial for you. And then, of course, we get back to research. And a lot of people, they say, oh, well, research shows this or that. Research shows that vegans have uh, lower cholesterol. Research shows that vegans have less heart disease. Research shows this or that. Well, here's the problem with research. Even if it's well conducted, even if it's meticulously done, even if it is completely valid, in that research, they, even if they say that 80% benefited, 80% got better, 80% lowered their cholesterol, 80% lowered their insulin resistance, what about the other 20%? Okay. What if you're in the 20% versus the 80? You can't run your life on probabilities. You have to figure out what works for you.
So when we look at research, the research, like I said, can be totally valid in their conclusions and applied to a group population. They can absolutely say that if you eat this way, then you will get these results, but it's not going to predict your outcome. It is not going to tell you if you need more catabolic or more anabolic. It is not going to tell you how well you can absorb and utilize. It is not going to tell you what you can digest and so on and so forth. That's why research is great. I love when they do research and they love, love when they do good research so we can learn from it. But in the end, we have to figure out what works for us and we have to understand enough about the variables so that we can make some good choices. We would all love for some smart guy or some team of smart guys to figure it all out for us, to once and for all decide here is the best diet and 100% of the people on the planet should follow this and 100% of them should get this result and we have finally once and for all concluded that this is the way it is and you don't have to question it, just do this and here are the items and you're never going to get that answer. They will never ever come up with that list because it doesn't exist. There's too much variability in the human population, in the genome, in the lifestyle, in experience, in history, and so forth. So you cannot wait for that. You cannot try to find one person or one label to define for you what's going to be the best thing. So forget about labels. Forget about the label of carnivore or vegetarian or keto or Atkins or Dash or whatever the latest label and idea is. Try a lot of different things. Try to understand what makes each one a good one and then understand that there are different states that you can be catabolic or anabolic, that you need both. Figure out what you can digest. Figure out what works for you. So learn as much as you can, try different things, observe the results, and once you have enough of the big picture, now you can narrow down your trial and error because you can avoid the absolutely stupid mistakes, the things that are absolutely not going to work, and those include everything with man-made food and processed food and sugar and chemicals and food additives because they will never add anything that your body needs. So focus on whole foods and then learn, try, observe, and figure out what works for you. So it turns out it's not really keto versus vegan either because you can do both at the same time. Keto is when you reduce the carbohydrates enough that your body gets better at burning fat. And a byproduct of the fat burning is ketones that you can measure so you can verify that you're in ketosis and that you're burning fat. And a lot of people say that, oh well, then that just means we cut out all plant food and we just eat bacon and eggs and steak and butter. And you can do it that way, but it wouldn't be very healthy for very long for most people. But you could still eat mostly plant-based or even all plant-based and be in ketosis. You just have to stop all the starchy stuff. So if you wanted to do both, then you just have to learn how to avoid potatoes and rice and bread and french fries and waffles and all that stuff and you have to eat a lot of leafy green vegetables and you have to up your vegetable fats so now you eat nuts and seeds things like flax seed and chia seed are going to work great they're they're very very low carbs if you eat the nuts then you have to look for the ones that are the lowest in carbs such as pecans and macadamia nuts you also have to find another fat source. So a lot of people eat butter on keto, so you have to find something else like coconut, uh, coconut oil or 
extra virgin olive oil, etc. So if you want to try vegan or vegetarian, then do so and see how it works for you. But don't do what a lot of people do, especially young people that do it because they feel that it's wrong to eat animals. So they just want to eat anything but that, but they don't have a clue on what to eat. So now they start eating macaroni and waffles and bread and french fries and all white starchy processed foods and they never touch a vegetable and they think that they're vegetarian which they are in the sense that they're not eating animal products but they're not getting any healthy foods they're eating tons of processed foods and of course all that processed food is not going to do them any good so now they're getting the worst of both worlds if you're going to do vegan, do it on whole food and try it and see how it works for you. If you enjoy this content and you're new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you have other people that you care about that you think they can benefit from this kind of content, then make sure that you share this information with them. It could save their life. Thanks for watching.